Hey Zen fam, so on my way home today, I saw this monstrosity in what used to be many years ago, the main HMV here in Edinburgh. Now, we got a game stuck inside a sports shop. Come with me on a magical journey as I show you what has become of game in 2023. Let me outline something for you, okay? Back in the day, on Princess Street, there were three independent game stores just on Princess Street proper. One in the Waverley Shopping Centre, or Princess Mall, but back, thankfully now it's called Princess, Sh uh, Princess uh, Waverley Shopping Centre again. And one also in the St James Centre, which is now the St James Quarter Mile, and it's not got a game in it, and it probably won't have, because game has been going downhill. I mean, we've seen it with American GameStop, how basically they're just loaded with toys these days, primarily Funko Pops. You know, and don't get me wrong, Funko Pops are fun and everything, but, you know, they're basically just bits of plastic to take up space. I mean, we've got a few ourselves like, and there's some pretty tasty ones, but we've never yet really found a way to actually display them that we can live with. So as it is, they sit on one side of the lounge, and they're still in their boxes. Weird thing about this store is that when it was HMV, I'm sure it was bigger. Because I'm sure it had more stuff in it. Oh well, whatever. Anyway, I'm trying to keep this camera angle nice and low so I wasn't getting any faces. So nobody can go, oh, you used my face. So if you, if you find your face popped up in this, I do apologise. Anyway, so we go up the escalator here. And eventually, you're going to see this game store and prepare your hearts if you're a hardcore gamer. This is not something that's pretty. I, it's just horrible. While we're getting up here, I should also say uh, the Clips competition is on hold because while I've been off sick from work with my leg, uh, I've not been making any money apart from statutory sick pay. So I can't afford to go buy the mug and post it. Okay, here we go. So we're worming our way. For all the sports tat, you know, it's just like, and all the kind of clothing that I wouldn't be seen deeding. I mean, nah, I just, you wouldn't see me in any of this. I saw it's a metal t shirt, and that's your lot with me. Right, this apparently constitutes a game store. This. Look at it. It's like, there's a couple of lines of games, some headphones and some controllers, another couple of lines of games and then essentially it's just toys, 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 toys and toys and board games and toys and plushies and toys and toys and toys and of course a very large selection of Funko Pops you know, oh look some consoles <gasps> I mean Look, there's barely even any delineation between where the game store ends and it goes back to being a sports direct. This is the state of things. This is what we've created. You know, because game can't compete with the digital marketplace. Either you've got Amazon coming along who will ship the game, you know, to your house either the next day or within two or three working days. You know, depending on whether or not you have Prime. And with that, it's basically... They can ship it to you cheaper than game can sell it to you in a store that you walk into. Because they don't have to worry about rent. They don't have to worry about staff. They don't have to worry about insurance for a store. They just have a gigantic warehouse filled with wage slaves. You know, because let's face it. People who work for Amazon are not well paid and are not well looked after. This has been thoroughly documented. It's like, because how do you think Jeff Bezos got so rich? By looking after people? I don't think so. And even if it's not the physical games, you know, being sold like way cheaper than game could ever possibly manage to do, you can walk into Asda and pay, generally speaking, anywhere from 5 to something 15 quid less for a game brand new in box than you can in game because Asda is far far larger and therefore has more buying power and is able to do more bulk buy thus reducing the money they spend for stuff so of course they can sell you a copy of you know 
whatever game you're after probably anywhere between five and 15 quid cheaper and I've seen it I've done it yeah. back in the day I went and bought a, my copy of Pacific Rim uh, Motorstone Pacific Rim okay and I got that for th I was about nearly 20 quid less than what it should have been at the time now bear in mind this is back in the PS3 days okay and I bought that game and I thought I'm gonna take it to game and I'm gonna sell it to them and I'm probably gonna make a few quid or at least cut even and get something else you know and uh, the guy said oh we're not taking that game and the reason that they wouldn't take that game get this because it was just after the Japanese tsunami you know the one that took it the Fukushima nuclear plant so I bought that game at the wrong time thankfully the game was awesome because I love the Motorstorm series anyway and I had great fun with that game but that's just a wee hang so as has always had that buying power but then you chuck on to the fact that like you've got your online digital downloads you know whether that be PC or your main console competitors because like Nintendo has got an online store Microsoft's got an online store PlayStation has got an online store where you just literally download the game into your system and it's there. No discs, no nothing. No box, just a game code, data in your system. And there's a, there's something about that, but then there's something missing about that. Because, okay, you can have a game downloading at midnight and you can watch that clock go tick, 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 and then reach the zeros and the download starts, you know? Or at least the download file is has started and is done and sent unlocked. You know, whichever way they get about it. But the fact of the matter is, there's nothing, there's nothing like the excitement of going and buying a game, getting it home, taking off that plastic, that smell of freshly minted disc in your nose. There's something about that. And that's going to go. Because more of these kinds of game inside of Sports Direct stores are opening up. There's more and more of this and less and less actual proper full bodied real game stores. And there's not so many little mom and pop operations. You know, there's a few cities in England and there's a couple of places here in Scotland, you know, where you can just go, go to an independent retailer. But the problem with these independent retailers is it's great if you're into retro. If you want retro stuff, you are sorted, my son. But if you want brand new, and you want like special editions and stuff, you're bang jaxed. In fact, it's even worse these days. You want the special edition of the game? Fine, buy your special edition. Have your steel book, have your statue, have your art book, have your commemorative coins, you know, probably a poster, maybe a packet playing cards with like the principal characters done up as the as the face values of the cards. All that kind of happy, happy stuff. But you know what you won't get in the box? You won't get a disc! No, 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 no! It's ridiculous! You want the disc? You have to go out and buy the normal everyday version and then put that in the steel book. Yeah, you have to go and buy the game twice. Because what you'll get in the special edition, sometimes these days, is a code. A code! So you can buy your statue of like whatever the character is from whatever game it is but when you get it home that's all you've got you got a statue you got an art book or whatever else or whatever kind of crazy happy-go-lucky stuff is in that box depending on how much you're willing to spend and what kind of addition you got but all you've got when it comes to the actual game is just a code. Now there are some people out there who are going to go it doesn't matter anyway because most of the time these days most of the game is online most of the game isn't even on the disc it's like yeah 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 I get that I get that I know that like in a lot of cases a lot of what is actually the game is in the down is the day one downloadable patch what's on the disc you know is mostly just the bare bones of actual making the game run and you know, obviously, games get patched throughout their lifespan, and there are very few. There's a greater amount of games these days that are printed on disc that aren't actually the full game. And if the set, if the every one day that's you know the server for that game goes away, that game itself goes away because that disc is basically an unplayable version by itself. 
fresh out the box. I get that, I understand that. But you know what that disc has? It has resellability. Because there'll be some collector out there, later on, many years down the line, not even a couple of years down the line, who goes, I want that. And we live in a transactional society. You give money for thing, thing comes over, Pat, all parties concerned. I've lost, I've got the thing out of the house, but I've got a bit of money in. I've given money, I get the thing. That's how it goes. And if we go to a place where it's fully download only, then more and more and more, we're going to see game stores turn into these atrocities that I've shown you in this video. And that is a really sad and sorry state of affairs. That game stores are basically dying. Everything is going away. Everything. It's like, um, remember a few years ago when game was in trouble and it looked like game was just going to completely disappear. Game stores up and down this wet, windy little island of ours were just closing, 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 closing. And it looked for a moment there really like a very real possibility that all the games were just going out of existence They're like pure Thanos before Thanos you know <laughs> it's like and it was horrible you know and there, there were people that I knew who worked in game stores who I was friendly with because I, fre I frequented a particular game store that I worked next to in the same shopping centre and I was sad to see them going and at the last second, the game got its reprieve, and they, they, you know, they redid their business model, and they pulled themselves up, and they got themselves reconfigured. And they started like bringing in like gate, you know, like phones and tablets and stuff, and reselling those. You know, they started getting in a little bit more of the merchandising side, and it looked fine for a good few years there. But then the merchandising became more and more and more. You know, you started getting more. Act, you know, action figures, which is fun. You know, I'm a big kid. I mean, we're 48, but I'm still. This is still 18. You know, and I like myself an action figure as much as the next nerd. <laughs> but come on, there's a limit to how much you can do. And a game store, at its essence, has got to be a game store. You know, filled with consoles, peripherals, and games. You know, network cards. You know, like games with credit on them for the stores, you know, so then you can top up your PSN or top up your Xbox Live or whatever else, you know, but the main thing is, there's, it's just lovely as a gamer, admittedly, this is probably me being a bit of a Gen X gamer, you know, <laughs> it's like, because uh, I think I'm Gen X, because I'm 48, so let's say born 74, so that probably means I'm Gen X, probably, I don't know, I really don't bear, bear much mind of that kind of thing. But, you know, I know that, like, I'm an older gamer, so therefore some of the things I like and know and well, I'm beginning to miss, you know, not all you out there in the Zen fam are going to be able to understand, but I'd like to think you could show, you know, a little bit of solidarity. You know, there's a thing where it's just, like, it's nice to go to a place and talk to members of staff and they understand what I'm talking about. They go, I'm going, look, I want to get this thing, there's that thing and the thing. And then while you serve while they're serving you, you can have a bit of banter about games and stuff. I mean, seriously, I have talked to so many wonderful staff at game stores who have a passion for gaming. And the reason they what the reason they work in game, because let's face it, those people that work in game, they're paid minimum wage, you know? But they like their job because they get to talk gaming with, with people who also really care about gaming. It's one of those jobs where, yeah, you do work with the public and the public can be, well, the public. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you that as someone that spent 13 and a half years as a barista. The public are crazy, but, <laughs> oh my God, the stories I could tell. Anyway, but it's nice to be able to go to a store and have a two-way conversation with somebody who cares about what they're selling and you know you can have a bit of banter you don't really have a bit of banter watching a code you know watching a download on a screen happen you know and there's some of the soul taken out of gaming now yes there's a thing that like 
you know, we gamers, we like to just be at home gaming, you know. The sooner we can get away from the store and back to the house and get the game in the system and install the game and then start playing it, the better. So there is that argument to be made that, you know, digital distribution basically means in system, load system, load the system, play game. No mucking about, you know. But then on the flip side of that is the joy of the midnight launch. I mean, I love a midnight launch. They're such good fun. I mean, like, um, I was first in line for PlayStation 5, as you've seen on this channel. I was first in line for PlayStation 4, as you've seen on this channel. I was first in line for PS3 and PS4 versions of Grand Theft Auto 5, also on this channel. It's like, and there's other times I've been either first in line or really close to the beginning of the line from a bunch of games. And even when I've not been, you know, particularly close, I've still had good fun. Hell, there have been times that I have attended a midnight launch for a game that I'm not even buying just so I can, like, soak up the atmosphere and film it for you guys. You know, so that you can live the midnight launch vicariously. There's your big word for the day, vicariously. <laughs> so, the idea that these one person half effort game stores exist is just another tiny knife in the back of gaming retail in the live action brick and mortar store. And it's another dark day for gaming and for the and for the chain game. And from what I've seen, similar things are afoot all around this spinning ball of mud around a gigantic nuclear explosion in space. <laughs> okay. Uh this is depressing. Uh let me think of something happy. Oh yeah! <laughs> I want YouTuber of the month. I'll take that. I'll go with that. And uh, I meant to say the thank you video uh, to Real Bit Wars and to Retro Video Game Virus. What one, one, sir? Thank you for hosting. And second, sir, thank you for picking me. Now, members and fam, you've also, if you were watching the series, which I assume you must be now because after all, you came along and voted for me. Please take a look at my nominees and. See about giving them a wee vote. I think they would appreciate that, you know, because uh, these things are community based and they live and die by community effort. Anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. You look after each other out there. Hashtag support Scottish YouTubers. And of course, as always, aye. Nay bother. <laughs>